Hey, it's Joe Glass from Automair, and uh, this is going to be what we automated this week with AutoHotKey. And first off, it's uh, Sunday, Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. By the way, one thing I was uh, teaching my son was yesterday we went and celebrated Father's Day at 2.30. We went to the restaurant to avoid all the crowds. Now, I know it's not Mother's Day, right? But still, it's just teaching you there's ways to avoid. If you, and you can avoid crowds, right? You save a lot of time. So that was first a quick lesson. But again, happy Father's Day. Let's jump into our actual script. You, actually, let me dump up, the, dump up the PPI here. And that's a hot key to adjust my DPI instantly, which is really cool. And this is, of course, Prompt Assistant, where I am going to launch the uh, recently modified files. This week, we, again, focused on very few things. I think maybe next week Rizwan will be back from doing his English lesson stuff also. So anyway, this payroll convert. So we wrote a script for one of our clients that's a accountant and he gets data in a certain structure and they need it in different ways. And so they were manually doing each time. And so we wrote a script for him that just converts it. And then they were not always converting them the same way. And we realized, of course, we need to um, for lack of a better way to say, you know, make, make it dummy proof. Not that they were doing something wrong, but it's easy as a human to forget to do certain things, right? So we added some extra things to it to confirm that the file is in the structure that we expect it to be. So that's another thing we did today. Um, close active programs in studio. I don't know why I was working on that, um, but oh, I think someone asked if there was an example. So I I had a V1 version and I converted it to V2 for him. The CDO sender now. This this is the we opened the file from the v, the version one and converted it. It was actually a really interesting use case where it actually took Isaiah and Irfan a fair amount of time to convert it because the com object they were had to access something in a certain way and it was very particular and made it a little tricky. So they worked through that. We um we discussed it during the hero call the other day of explaining why it was complicated. Anyway, they're now is a CDO sender, which we made into V2 um, somewhere. Maybe it's just this one here. And we changed the name because Gmail used to be able to get an app password, but they changed it to, um, I forget what it's called. I'm sure someone will put it in the comments. Yeah, they, they changed it to use a certain different way to do it, which we weren't sure how to do that. So if you, this can still work if you have a normal email SMTP email address and account and your password you can enter that enter that and send your emails but gmail uh we unfortunately didn't see a way to easily do that and it's just not something i think a lot of people are doing anymore so um we're not, we didn't bother to try to figure that out um trigger class so this we are when we let me bring over like uh a, a script let me bring over my whole taskbar and show you like in flexifinder or we can use get active path. There's this set hotkey, and here we have set hotkey, and here's this shows you what it is, but we can click this, and we can, of course, change it. Well, this is all custom code that we change all the time, right? And I said, that's kind of silly. And also, let's see, is it, no, it's um, toggle across monitors, which is another great one to toggle your programs to different monitors. Uh, and let's go into preferences here. Now here, because we needed to be able to have a mouse um, or a keyboard, right? Because, but I said we should we should make this available in our preference center to either choose uh, a mouse click with a control key or a modifier key, key, a keyboard with a modifier key, or even a hot string depending on the script. And we should have a class that makes it really easy. And not, the class just doesn't do that; it actually saves it to the any file and automatically adds it to our system tray menu, right? So. Well, my media player has a bunch of them. So these these would automatically be created for you to tell you what the hotkey does, right? So we're working on a class, and we came up with a really interesting... I should have probably recorded the dialogue because it was an interesting discussion between me, Isaias, and Irfian, talking about the pros and cons of each approach, and then how we realized, why don't we rarely, rarely... Like in Prompt Assistant, I can assign a trigger, a... a hotkey and a hot string to trigger it and of course you have your menus but most people you either want to choose a hotkey or a hot string or a mouse click but you don't want to have all of those things together right that's a rare thing so i said why don't we just design it where they first pick which one they want a mouse click you know or a hotkey or a hot string and then that 
that new menu will pop up and it'll be customized for those actions. So we'll be sharing that at some point, um, but Irfan got a good start. Once we finally nailed it down, it was just a really interesting dialogue talking about the choices in, should we try to cram them all into one? Because the problem is like in some of those scripts you saw, we have multiple hotkeys and when you have multiple hotkeys and when menus that change depending on it, it makes drawing that GUI really complex. This way we have a drop down where you choose between them and then it pops up with a different GUI depending on what you selected. So that'll really streamline that code and make it much easier to, for, for people to use, for us to use. Um, it also f helps people understand to focus on that one hotkey at that time. So I I'm really happy with that. With I'm sure we'll, we'll have something cool to share. Um, this course HTML list, we, we just on Father's Day, and it's actually for um, June 20th is World Productivity Day. So we made, um, if you've never bought a course from us, we sent you an email, if you're in our email list, with a, a very severe discount to buy your first course. And But we customized the script for generating the links, generating the discount codes, um, and do a lot of stuff. It writes HTML, um, but we just use the links because it, it builds the hyperlink where it will automatically add it to your account. I'm sorry, to the, the checkout with if you apply that coupon for you. So... It's, um, it's very custom for what we do, but it saves an amazing amount of time because we have, I think, 14 or 15 courses now. And generating those links when we do have a sale for every course is just really tedious. Besides, besides being tedious, it's easy to get something wrong. And that's where putting it into a tool um, makes it, yeah, you can get it wrong once, but once you get it right, it stays right. And we don't have to worry about it. Um, our pretty links tool, this tool, I can, um, well, that's going to open the folder. Let me hit the hotkey, though. This is where um, I can search for, um, you know, across our pretty links, which are just links to things either on the automator or um, let's say like uh, web scraping. And I know we have like a playlist, so here's the, a video for it. Uh, somewhere in here is our page. I believe I have a playlist for it. Somewhere in here we'd probably see YouTube. Yeah, here's a YouTube playlist for it. These are, <laughs> it's an IE, yeah, that's, it's a dated one. Um, but it's really cool. This is what allows me, and when I double click it, it puts the pretty link. That's the endpoint, but it'll take this slug and put it into a URL. And depending if I have this selected or not, it will wrap it. Um, so what we did though was we we made it where I can easily add a link. So now I can add a pretty link, give it a new URL very very quickly. So and it's usually it, it's helped to create links to things where the URL is really long and horrible and mentioning a video would be really stupid because no one would type out like this thing, right? Um, or I want it for tracking because I can add things to these key value pairs at the end. I could give a different one of those for Facebook and for YouTube and for the newsletter and for LinkedIn or whatever, and I can tell where people are clicking them from. So it's really cool for that. So uh, we made some updates to that. Uh, that's just my default script, apparently. Uh, auto unsubscribe. We, as you know, you know, I mentioned we changed all of our downloads to be at least a dollar. Or now we actually have a couple options. You can either pay six dollars for the year. You can buy them one dollar at a time, which is perfectly fine. Right? It's a buck though. It's it's pretty cheap. Um, or you can pay for the year um, for six dollars as a subscription. But but one of our hero members complain, and I don't blame him. I I honestly hate subscription services too. He said, why don't you make a, a one time buy that you can get it forever and so i said i arbitrarily picked 24.99 as the price point i think that's the price um, where now you can pay that and then you have it forever for as long as we're offering downloads um you can have access to them for that one-time purchase and that's mainly there were a couple reasons for that one though really was to, to to get better valid email addresses when people ask to download something because they put in bad email addresses, but they also put in swear words and tell me to F off and a lot of crazy stuff. Um, just stuff that just quite really, really rude. Um, so this, Hey, if you're going to, you can, be, you can be rude if you're going to give me money. I'm okay with that, but, uh, this will help with that. Anyway, um, there was a bonus, I guess. I think we were working on the bonus. This was that newsletter that, that's right in the newsletter, but the email I just sent out today with the discounts, I first started off. It was going to be a bonus for, um, one email to everybody listing every course. But what we did was we looked at all of our courses and said, okay, if no one's ever bought a course, they should probably start with the intro to auto hotkey, right? If they haven't, if they've bought intro to auto hotkey, the, the next course would be the intermediate auto hockey. So we, we gave them really good discount codes and told them instead of saying, here's, here's our 14 courses you might pick and choose. It's better. It's kind of like, you know, when you go to buy 
a flavor of jelly at the store and there's 40 options you get confused and might not even buy anything but when there's three options it's very clear and you're like oh i want that one right that makes it very easy so we, we gave good advice we looked at their knowledge level kind of based off of their past purchases and made an assessment and said here's what we're going to give you a deal on usually often we gave them like discounts to that or like the vs code because that's a great course um, regardless of kind of your skill level, in V2, if you're using V2, it's kind of really you're you're kind of forced to use it these days. Uh, but yeah, our script object, we were we were updating a little bit of information in there to have some extra information. Uh, this bar charts, we recorded a video on it. I haven't, don't think I've shared it yet. By the time you see this, but it, we use a status bar to create bar simple bar charts. It's really cool. I really have, and it's available both as a function and a class. And it's, a, it's also a great one to start playing with it as a function and then later learn, like maybe take our objects course um, and learn how to use classes and access it as a class. Both have their pros and cons, right? Um, but it's it's very, it, it makes it super easy so almost anybody can use it. Um, and don't forget, our courses come with a 200% money back guarantee. So whatever you pay for it, if you're not happy with it within the first 30 days, we'll not only refund you what you paid for, but we'll double that. So you got nothing to lose, right? Um, this text to speech, so so it was quite funny. I think I demoed it last week. This voice access, which is down here, which we spent Irfan's almost all of his time was on that. Um, we can't find a way to trigger programmatically to start. Well, we can trigger the um, be, to turn on voice access, but we can't switch it to command mode. And so I had a, a bad theory, but I I tried it. I didn't tell Irfan. I'm like, I gotta try something. So I used the sappy voice object to tell, to say it out loud, have the computer speak the command to turn on command mode. It was quite hilarious. Um, and, it, and it mainly works. You know, there's prob times where other people are talking and it, and it gets confused with what it hears, but it still, hopefully we'll find a way to program it to turn it on because it's really annoying to have to turn it on every time. Um, but it, it, yeah, there's that. This, um, Text under mouse. Oh, this one we were we were also demonstrating some stuff with the GUI test with this text under mouse. I think that was just to show, which should be in this list. If not, it was. Um, we'll be releasing it in a while of adding some cool stuff like to this resizable GUI as well. Um, we added some cool stuff to it to allow you to hold down control and zoom in and out on the GUI. And so, but we haven't made a video on that yet. But um, that and also. Oh, the con hitting control and having it automatically backspace. Those are things that on an edit control, like you kind of want those by default. So we thought of things that are missing in a normal auto hockey GUI and added them. So we should have those in all edits, right? Cause you don't want to ever have to hit, hit control backspace and then have it not work. I'm sure everyone here watching this video knows what I'm talking about. And you can create a hotkey to do it, but we wrote one that would be embedded in our, in our GUI. So not have to worry about it. So here, yeah, look at all these voice access stuff. Um, so the voice access interface is, I mean, it's horrible. Um, and I know it's still in beta and you only have access to it if you're running Windows 11 with the most recent updates, right? It's very new and, but it's very cool. Uh, unfortunately, it needs some improvement um, and their interface. What we realized was they store their, the voice commands and what to do with them in a JSON file. And we realized we could easily read that file and edit it right so we wrote our own interface which next week i'm pretty sure we'll record a video showing how to use it um I, i'm really excited about it and, and i think it's going to get better and better but it's, it's still our tool is pretty cool because it does it does things that their gui can't um and it also is just much easier to use uh, their interface is just terrible thanks microsoft so anyway um there's that uh, again lots of stuff with the voice access um weekly hero content this is our summarized video. I still got to figure out how to record a video to show how that works. Um, it's pretty slick if you have to do something like this. Saves us, saves me in particular, because I'm the one that runs it every week. After our hero calls, I load up the files to YouTube, and then I use a YouTube AI summarizer, but it, it, um, it summarizes the video in a nice, you know, paragraph and then links with timestamps. But those characters it's usually about eight thousand characters well youtube only allows you to put five thousand characters in their description thing so we have to trim it some but on our page where the hero members have access i don't want to limit that one so we take the full version and and a thumbnail to the video and do all the stuff in html on our web page 
And then in YouTube, we put the summary, the, the shortened version of the adapt to nearly 5,000 characters and put it in there. And it's just, it, it's a bear. It used to take me, you know, I don't know, seven, seven, ten minutes for each one, somewhere in there. I don't know. Uh, at least five um, to do each one. And that's um, three videos a week because we do three hours of calls every week with these guys. And it was just a beat. And, and you had to, it was very nuanced. You could easily mess something up. And so we now basically have it in an easy to use script, which really helps. Um, Irfan used Rafadian. We were automated all of it. And it, we had some problems every once in a while at the beginning. And so I said, you know what? Skip automating the beginning part because it's just not reliable enough. Get me to this one point, and then I'll hit a hotkey, and it will take it from there. And I used it yesterday, I don't know, this morning, and it worked flawless. It was great, and I cruised through it in three minutes total, like for all of them. I mean, it was it was really cool. So they were like one minute each. Um, very, very cool, very easy. And it gave me the links onto another file where I could share it in our Telegram group where our hero members are as well. So... If you have processes where you are constantly having to either download files or do something with files, um, or especially like Excel files as well, or Word files and reports, we, hey, those can be automated. And it's just, it's a shame most people don't do it or do like some of our client members, Scott, um, he was the one that told us, about, told us about the voice access. And uh, we're doing calls with him regularly now where we help level him up. Um, and we're automa helping him automate some of his reporting some of it we do a bit more of, and some of it we're making sure we explain what we do. Like last week, we talked, to, we went deep on API calls with them, and explained what they are and how how you know you may or may not want to use them. And sometimes, auto, doing web scraping is is the right approach for, instead of doing API calls, even though web scraping is technically an API call. But sometimes it's just a bit easier to um, use the browser. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Please like the video. If you learned something, use that coupon code you have till June 20th, um, which is, I think, the day this will air. So yeah, but uh, go ahead and use it. It's, it's, it's especially your first course. It's a very steep discount. The other ones were up to um, 40 and 50%, I think. And if they're over $100, you automatically get a 10% discount on top of it when you go to purchase. So on checkout, because um, that's the way we roll. So hope that helps. Have a great day. Um, again, happy Father's Day. Cheers.